My hope is that anyone who listens will be helped in reaching their goal in life. Is there a force, a factor, a power, a science, call it what you will, a something which a few people understand and use to overcome their difficulties and achieve outstanding success? I firmly believe that there is. I am presenting it in the language of a businessman who believes that sincere thinking and plain speaking will get any message across to the people. I realize I have run across something that is workable, but I don't consider it as anything mystical except in the sense that it is unknown to the majority of people and is little understood by the average person. I have read literally thousands of books on modern psychology, metaphysics, ancient magic, voodooism, yogism, theosophy, Christian science, unity, truth, new thought, and many other dealings. Many of these books were nonsensical, others strange, and many very profound. Gradually, I discovered that there is a golden thread that runs through all the teachings and makes them work for those who sincerely accept and apply them. That thread can be named in a single word, belief. It is the same element or factor, belief, which causes people to be cured through mental healing, enables others to climb the ladder of success and gets phenomenal results for all who accept it. Why belief is a miracle worker is something that cannot be satisfactorily explained, but have no doubt about it. There's genuine magic in believing. As a matter of fact, the idea that I could, with my thinking and believing, develop a fortune never entered my mind. It doesn't matter to what end this science is used, it will be effective in achieving the object of your desires. Glance around you. If you are in a furnished room, your eyes tell you that you are looking at a number of inanimate objects. Now that's true so far as visual perception is concerned, but in reality, you are actually looking at thoughts or ideas which have come into materialization through the creative work of some human being. It was a thought first that created the furniture, fashioned the window glass, and gave form to the draperies and coverings. The automobile, the skyscraper, the great planes that sweep the stratosphere, the sewing machine, the tiny pen, a thousand and one things, yes, millions of objects. Where did they come from originally? Only one source, from that strange force, thought. As we look further, we realize that these achievements, and in fact all our possessions, came as a result of creative thinking. Thought is the original source of all wealth, all success, all material gain, all great discoveries, inventions, and of all achievements. With that in mind, it becomes easy to understand that a man's thoughts make or break him, and Shakespeare's words become more intelligible there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Many people feel that success comes with hard work. However, I would like to point out that hard work alone will not bring success. The world is filled with people who have worked hard but have little to show for it. Something more than hard work is necessary. It is creative thinking and firm belief in your ability to execute your ideas. The successful people in history have succeeded through their thinking. Their hands were merely helpers to their brains. Another important point is 
that one essential to success is that your desire be an all obsessing one your thoughts and aims be coordinated and your energy be concentrated and applied without let up it may be riches or fame or position or knowledge that you want for each person has his own idea of what success means to him but whatever you consider it to be you can have it provided you are willing to make the objective the burning desire of your life by using the dynamic force of believing you can set all your inner forces in motion they in turn will help you reach your goal the first thing to determine is precisely what you want starting in with the general idea that you merely want to be a success as most people do is too indefinite you must have a mental pattern clearly drawn in your mind ask yourself where am i headed what is my goal have i visualized just what i really want if success is to be measured in terms of wealth can you fix the amount in figures if in terms of achievement can you specify it definitely i ask these questions for in their answers are the factors which will determine your whole life from now on most people have a general idea that they would like to be a success but beyond that everything is vague you must know where you are headed and you must keep a fixed goal in your view only then will you get what you are after you begin with desire if you ever hope to achieve anything or gain more than you have now however as we shall see there is more to it than mere desire it has been said that thought attracts that upon which it is directed thought attracts that upon which it is directed our fearful thoughts are just as creative or just as magnetic in attracting troubles to us as are the constructive and positive ones in attracting positive results so no matter what the character of the thought it does create after its kind when this sinks in to a man's consciousness he gets some inkling of the awe inspiring power which is his to use I cling to the theory that while thoughts do create and exercise control far beyond any limits yet known to man they create only according to their pitch intensity emotional quality depth of feeling or vibratory plane in other words comparable to the wavelength and wattage of a radio station thoughts have a creative or controlling force in the exact ratio of their constancy intensity and power all persons living in high altitudes have felt and sometimes observed the electric spark resulting from walking across the room then touching some metallic substance that of course is a form of static electricity generated by friction it gives you an idea of how one kind of electricity can be developed through the body sigmund freud the famous austrian psychoanalyst brought the world's attention to the hypothesis that there was a powerful force within us an unilluminated part of the mind separate from the conscious mind constantly at work molding our thoughts feelings and actions others have called this division of our mental existence the soul some call it the superego the inner power the superconsciousness the unconscious the subconscious and various other names it isn't an organ or so-called physical matter such as we know the brain to be nevertheless it is there and from the beginning of recorded time man has known that it exists the ancients often referred to it as the spirit paracelsus called it the will others have called it the mind an adjunct to the brain some have referred to it as conscience the creator of the still small voice within still others called it intelligence and have asserted that it is a part of the supreme intelligence to which we are all linked 
No matter what we call it, I prefer the word subconscious, it is recognized as the essence of life, and the limits of its powers are unknown. It never sleeps, it comes to our support in times of great trouble, it warns us of impending danger, often it aids us in what seems impossible. It guides us in many ways and when properly employed performs so-called miracles. Perhaps the most effective method of bringing the subconscious into practical action is through the process of making mental pictures, using the imagination, perfecting an image of the thing or situation as you would have it exist in physical form. This is usually referred to as visualization. Before this visualization can work, you must really believe. A firm and positive conviction that goes through every fiber of your being. When you believe it heart and soul, as the saying goes. Now call it a phase of emotion, a spiritual force, a type of electrical vibration, anything you please. But that's the force that brings outstanding results. It sets the law of attraction into operation and enables sustained thought to correlate with its object. This belief changes the tempo of the mind or thought frequency and like a huge magnet draws the subconscious forces into play, changing your whole aura and affecting everything about you and often people and objects at great distances. Many times the solution of our problems result from the use of the conscious mind. But now and then, when the solution is not forthcoming, we become exhausted with continued trying. We begin to lose confidence in ourselves and we often resign ourselves to the idea that we have failed, that nothing can be done about it. Here is where the subconscious mind comes in. It helps us to renew our belief in ourselves. It assists us to overcome our difficulty and to put us on the road to achievement and success. Just as the conscious mind is the source of thought, so the subconscious is the source of power. Also, it is one of the greatest realities in human life. It is rooted in instinct and is aware of the most elemental desires of the individual, yet it is always pressing upward into conscious existence. It is a distinct entity. It possesses powers and functions with unique mental organization all its own. It maintains and preserves the well-being and indeed the very life of the body. Unaided by the conscious mind, in times of great emergency, it springs into immediate action, again independent of the conscious mind. It takes supreme command, acting with incredible certitude, rapidity, accuracy, and understanding in the saving of the life of the individual. It can be summoned to help the conscious mind in times of great personal necessity. When the conscious calls upon the subconscious to use its powers and resources to solve a vital problem or bring to pass that which is sought or desired by the individual. To draw upon the resources and powers of the subconscious and awaken it into action, you must first be sure that you are asking for something that is rightfully yours to have and is within your ability to handle. The subconscious manifests itself only according to the capabilities of the person. Then you must have patience and absolute faith. The subconscious mind will not take the trouble to work for those who do not believe in it. In conveying your need to the subconscious, it must be in the spirit that the work has already been done. So while it is necessary for you to feel and think yourself successful, it is important for you to go one step further and actually see yourself as already successful, either in the performance of some selected task or as actually occupying the position to which you are aspiring. For the next and final step, you must wait patiently while the subconscious is assimilating the elements of your problem 
and then goes about its own way to work it out for you. The solution of your problem will be revealed to you. The correct course of action will be indicated. You must follow those indications immediately and unquestioningly. There must be no hesitation on your part, no mental reservation, no deliberation. You must receive the message from the subconscious freely and after understanding it, you must act on it at once. Only by doing that will you make your subconscious serve you and continue to respond whenever you call upon it. One day you will find yourself in the position you sought through the aid of the subconscious and doing the work you envisioned for yourself. Then when you look back, you will see how the things you were called upon to do all formed a logical line of events. The last one of which was your final arriving, the reward of your sincerest hopes and desires, your own triumphant personal success. To become the person that you would like to be, you create a mental picture of your newly conceived self. And if you continue to hold it, the day will come when you are in reality that person. Shakespeare said, assume the virtue if you have it not, 